in political science classroom. And of course, when we do academic performance, uh, academic presentation, there are some requirements. And those requirements are basically universally accepted by in, in the academic circle. We use contents to uh, persuade the audience, but not the effect. So throughout the presentation, you will know it is a good chance for you to highlight the most important part you want to deliver to your audiences. So you have to keep in mind, audience is the target when you prepare, when you prepare your presentation. And let's look at this. And uh, when we want to present our GP on November 19th, and of course, this is um, basically your paper matters more than your presentation. Your papers. And uh, you have to make sure your papers are qualified. And uh, with quality, and also uh, you have to follow all the format. At least you don't want to be criticized, just like an amateur to write a, a diary. No, you have to present it in an academic form. So that's why the department has issued you, all of you, uh, the manual for your, the, G, the GP manual for you to follow. So it's very important for you to uh, just follow that, the headings, the format, the nice, the fonts must be, uh, must be just exactly as the same as the requirement, the layout in the manual book. So it's important for you to keep in mind. And this is the final stage for you before you can go to the reviewing panel to present your presentation. So for now, uh, it will make no sense for you to uh, go to collect another data and try to find out something that is more interesting to write in. No, it's not. For now, the, the stage, the most important task for you to do at this stage is to finalize, finish your paper. So you have to put the final touch and make your paper as pre presentable as possible. Okay, so that's why I say AC, GP itself matters more than the presentation. However, if you, have, if you could give a good presentation and highlight the major points before your reviewers, then that would be a plus uh, because each reviewer has to read around 17 to 20, 20 uh, GP articles. That is a hack of uh, workload, right? So they may not have the full comprehension of your paper, but with your presentation, they may have a good idea about what you really want to talk about. So uh, presentation is a good time for you to, to make a strike. It's a good time to, for you to make your own statement. And also it is a good time to make sure that the reviewers can be satisfied with your papers. Okay, so how to present, uh, how, to pre how to prepare your presentation? Well, basically, basically there are some rules out there. And uh, you can go to this paper, uh, this PPT to go through all the details and uh, I just go this very fast and later I will give you two examples. First of all, let's think about let's think about how many pages we can have. First of all, of course, we need to figure out how many pages we can have for so basically this is the page layout. Don't use too many pages. Introduction, these are the five sectors you need to have, right? So one, two, three, four, five. And before that, there should be have, you should have an outline something to lay out outline of presentation. So this will be one page, right? But this one will be very short, so it does not really count. But basically you need to have a one, uh, one page for this one. And the end of a uh, Q and A, or oh, thank you, thank you, thank you page, just one. 
So this, the primary part is here. The primary part is here. Okay, here. So it's around 10 to 12 pages. So now I give you an, an example. So let's see this one. Okay. Uh, where is the? Okay. So here one. So this is online, right? And uh, this is background information. Background, the, she used one page and research questions. Research purpose and research questions. There are five over here. Okay, and here comes the research uh, literature review, one page is, one page, and the other page, and methodology, right? So research uh, literature review has two pages, and this is methodology. So you have to use this wisely. And now, here is the data analysis. So let's back to the research method. There's only one page. Here, there's one page. But technically, it has a lot of information by using this. OK, see that? So this is the whole process. Data collection, DT search, and content analysis, how to do this, and how many they have, and so on, blah, 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 blah. And there's only one page. So just make it as concise and screen and squeeze into one page. OK, so it's kind of interesting. So now let's uh, see the other one. So here is the data analysis for research question number one and this is evidence and see and this is number two still the same page and number three and number four number five and this is discussion and conclusion, right? So basically, you can use a, a lot of innovation in one slide to make it clearly presenting with a logical order of your of your your, your context. So this discussion and conclusion, and uh, see this one. <clears throat> With some good idea about what is the sequence of her presentation, right? And now, thank you very much. And what here is this one, and then conclusion. Thank you. So this is one of the of the way. And she went to a Zhengda Zhengzhi Jingji Yanjiu So, and now she worked for a, um, a Li Wei Ban Gong Si. Uh, no, no, she was a she is now a project manager in Chenggong Da Xue. Okay, so she's good. Okay, so this is one example. Let me give you another one. There's another one here. Okay. This one is a little bit different, but still, let, let's check the number of the pages. It's a little bit more because it, it, she has 18 pages. Okay, let's see how, how she lay out her presentation. So this one, and uh, this is online, and background, introduction, and uh, okay, this is the major question, and uh, then research purpose and the questions too. So this is very formal and very plain but standard, standard way of presentation. So this is your review, and uh, here is page one, and page two, and page three. She used uh, three, four pages. That is too much. This one is too much, indeed. Five pages for this is your review is too much.
Okay, so you have to try to uh, squeeze them into, uh, let's say, one or two pages. That would be good. So, and methodology. Methodology, and uh, here is the methodology, and uh, describing, and uh, here, still the methodology. So, two pages. So, data analysis. So, one, two, one, blah, blah, blah. This is one. And this is two. And uh, here is the discussion part. So conclusion is here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So this is another kind of. Uh, well, no one is perfect, but you can uh, just uh, try to use their sample to expand your. Uh, use your own imagination and your skill of, uh, of creating PPT and uh, you may be able to uh, do a very good job but keep in mind the space, the slides that you can use for your presentations is always limited because you, have only, you only have 10 minutes, right? so you have to time your presentation of each slide okay, very carefully so I have put on our, our group. You just go there and uh, retreat and take them back. And here I want to go to the presentation for political science one more time. Give you some idea about what are the requirements we are looking for for your presentation. Okay, I will go this very quickly. Basically, I give you some good and bad examples and uh, let you know what is good, what is bad. That would be good enough. So let's try to go here. So these are the good and bad examples for presentation. This one is good. Something like this is clear and uh, very balanced, no strange stuff. And you always you will, it will be advisable for you to use light background and a dark fonts. Don't change it the other way. Don't use a don't use dark background and the light words. That would be very strange. Don't use that. Okay, and uh, this is bad. Did you see that? Why this is bad? Because if you ask your readers to read. If you ask your readers to read, then why don't you just give them the paper and you walk away, right? So this is bad, but this is good. This one is good, and this is bad. And uh, did you notice that all the words here, most of the time, is not really a sentence, just a key phrase, key point, key concept. So don't try to write sentences. The writing sentences in the way just like this, this is bad. Okay? So you have to put them into a several points, several nice. That will be easier for you, you your audience to follow. And here is the good one. Let's see this one. This is good. So you can see we come out one by one, right? You can if you want to use animation, then this is you can do this. One, two, three. And this is bad. Okay? Let's take a look. Th don't do this. This is very strange. It's not balanced. And I know some students will try to, hey, I want just want to make it uh, equally distributed space <laughs> on the page. Don't do this, okay? Okay, and, and the fonts, there are requirements for fonts too. Normally, we will ask you to use at least 18 point font. And this font is 28, okay? And this is 32, and this is 44, 32 and 44. Normally, we will use this. And also, we use a standard font like Cobol, Calibri, or Arial. Don't use Times New Roman. Don't use comic style. Don't use a very strange, a very fancy style. Let Let's see what what when we say standard font, what do we mean? 
you, you, if you take a look here, there is no pointing, pointing anger out of this. Let me write, let me write this for you. See, this is a, this is standard form, but this is not. Okay. There is a tail, the tail, 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 but there is no tail, right? So it's like a horn out there. This kind of font is good for writing. If you wrote, if you write your paper on a paper, it's presentable. But now we are talking presentation. We do not want this kind of font out there. Or you want, or sometimes you will use. For example, this is even worse. So just keep it simple. For me, I prefer Calibri. Here is Calibri. I always use Calibri to make our presentation because this font is gorgeous and plain and easy to read. Okay, so be careful for this one and don't do this. It's kind of strange. Okay, so let's continue. So it will advisable for you to use Kobo Calibri and uh, OK Area, <coughs> and this is very bad. You see this one? On a computer, you may be able to see this one, but but when you project the image on a huge screen, then nobody will like to do it. And also, don't capitalize only, for, don't capitalize all the word. If you really want to do this, you have to make sure it is really necessary. And it don't use a complicated font. Uh, if you want to, a want to make a birthday card, that will be fine. But this is not a birthday card, OK? Uh, so this is bad. And uh, color, you could use color sometimes. For example, this red. Red highlight word, right? Why you want to use this? You want to emphasize. So, but you need, <coughs> you have to make sure that you have to use is occasionally, not all the time, only occasionally, okay? If you use all of them all the time, then there's no points, no important points, right? So only use occasionally. And here, the bad one. Can you see this? Can you see the word here? It's very difficult, right? And uh, let's see the last, la la the last one. <laughs> I, I spend some time to make all the different colors, and you can see this is even absurd, right? We are not kindergartners. This is good for kindergartens to play with around the words, but we don't. Uh, this is bad, even worse, and this has no idea what. Even I, I'm sitting in front of my computer. I cannot read it. So strange, right? So don't use this kind of beautiful color. Never, never, unless it is necessary. Just go to this one. It's much better. This one is very, very bad. OK? So remember, <coughs> when you presentation, we could use some animation. We could use some uh, color font some but not all of them not all of them because if you are using all of this fancy font colorful font or very strange words then it seems that you are eating garlic for lunch only right that would be very strange you could have a garlic or, or some spice added into your main meal but not using but not only eating the garlic all the time so you don't do this, okay? This is bad. Okay, and the background. Background, I say we use light. Basically, we prefer background should be light, okay? And the other one is the background should be consistent. So use all the font, all the background with the same style, consistent style, no change. They don't want to change it at all, okay? Uh, this is one, and uh, this is the uh, back one. Can you see 
<laughs> what does that mean? <coughs> you have to avoid background that are distracting or difficult to read for. So this one is very distracting. Don't use this, okay? <laughs> I have no idea about this cartoon. You have no idea. Why do you want to have this? Why? Sometimes a lot of students just put a lot of icon, a lot of image over there and to show that uh, seems to be related, but nothing related. So if there is nothing related, then why you want to put this? Okay? So please avoid, refrain from doing this. This is bad. Okay? Don't do this. <coughs> and graph. <coughs> when you want to use your graph, then the graph on the data should be easier to comprehend. Okay? And then here is a good one. This is good. How can you judge it is good? First, it is, it is easy to read. The other one, there's a title for this one. Items sold in first quarter, right? And uh, it's good. And also, and also, it has uh, it's appropriate paste. Uh, nine of here indicate 190 and the color is clean. So basically, its balance is clean. And let's look at the next one. It's not good. This one is bad. Such a huge one, but with this tiny one, right? But actually, this one is exactly this one. This one is more present to eyes, but this one is strange. And this one is even worse. Okay? So, simple picture is always the best. Just keep it as simple as possible. Don't use too much, too many fancy effects and so that you, you will confuse your readers. Okay? And this one is definitely not allowed. This is a very, very bad example. And you should never do it. Why? Right? Let's look at this one. The whole pages of your you just copy, take a photo of your page and a post on your slide. This is the even worse. Okay? So never do this. Okay, so uh, you, you can read the rest of the information by yourself. So I advise you to... You can go through this one and uh, you can go through this one by yourself and to see what, what are the major requirements you need to do and just follow it. When you learn the basic understanding, then you can use the two different samples to create your own present, uh, presentation slides. And these two have some differences, but they all follow the main structure. That is, you have to make sure your presentation must include the five major parts. Introduction, literature, uh, introduction, literature review, methodology, and the data analysis and the conclusion. Okay, so just make sure. And remember, after you, before your introduction, you should have an outline of your presentation. So both of them have, so you could learn something from them. Okay, so far, any question? Any question? So if not, and later, then everyone, uh, you can go out and I will arrange each of you for private consultation. Let's go through from Kesik and uh, Sophia and Rosanne, Yuting, Hayo, Sanxi, Hayo, Jia Yun. So, Yo. Cut 
啊，其他人可以先离开，然后我会在我们的 mic I will put the name on the our mic group so you can join the Google meeting and come back again. Okay, so the other five just go away and Jerry and stay. <coughs> 好，佳云。